In this video, I'm going to create a Magic 8-Ball game in C. So the way that a Magic 8-Ball works is that the player shakes the Magic 8-Ball while asking a yes or no question, like, is it going to rain tomorrow? And then the Magic 8-Ball responds with one of 20 possible answers. So we'll store those 20 possible answers in an array of strings. We'll say here car star answers is equal to, and then we'll put in our 20 possible answers. And 10 of them are yes, five of them are maybe, five of them are no. And they're all kind of differently phrased just to make it more fun. So then to store the user's question, we'll make a question array. We'll say car question, and we'll say 1,024 characters because that should be plenty to store the user's question for the Magic 8-Ball. We'll include a bunch of libraries to help us here as well. We'll include the string.h library, so we can use the string comparison function to help us know when to quit, as well as the string length function. We'll include the stdbool.h library, so we can use a boolean true or false. And we'll include the stdlib.h library and the time.h library, so we'll be able to introduce some randomization as well. So the way our program is gonna work is that we're gonna repeatedly ask the user to enter a question, and then we're gonna select one of these 20 possible answers for that question. So we'll make a do while loop, and the do while loop is gonna be responsible for repeatedly asking the question. And it's just gonna continue indefinitely until the user enters quit. And then we'll ask the user to actually enter a question. So we'll say one, two, three, four, five, ask magic eight ball. One, two, three, four, five. Do some new lines here. And we'll tell them they can enter quit to quit. So we'll say enter quit to exit. Put in some new lines there. And then we'll ask for the question. So we'll say question. And we'll use F gets to store their question into the question array. So we'll say F gets question 1024 STIN. So what this is gonna do is read from standard in, which is gonna be the terminal, and it's gonna store what's entered into the question array, up to 1,024 characters. And the first thing we're gonna do is check to see if they entered quit, because if they entered quit, we're done. And we'll use the string comparison function from the string.h library to help with that. So we'll say if strcmp question is equal to quit slash n, that's what we wanna quit. So the string comparison function is gonna compare this string to this string. And if they're equal, it's gonna return zero. So that's how we're gonna to check to see if they've entered quit. And if they do enter quit, they'd put in quit and then they'd hit enter, which would be a new line. And so that's what would be stored in question. So that's what we're checking for. And if that's the case, we're gonna break. And when we break, that's gonna break us out of this otherwise infinite loop. And it'll stop the sequence of magic eight ball questions. So next we'll actually process the question and determine what to answer with. So the way we're gonna do this is gonna be kind of fun. We're gonna use the actual question characters themselves to determine which answer to respond with. So that way the question asked actually plays a bit of a role in terms of the response we get. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take advantage of how ASCII characters work. So the character A has a value. The value is 97. The character B is 98 and so on. All characters have a value like this. What we're gonna do is total the value of all the characters in the string. Then we're gonna do modulus 20 to put that in the range of zero to 19. So we can get one of these answers here in the answers array. So we'll say int length is equal to strlen question. We'll get the length of the question. We're gonna to need to total up the value of all the characters, so we'll make total equal to zero. Then we'll have a loop that's gonna look at each character in the string. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than length, i plus plus. So look at each character in the string and add its value to the total. So total plus equals question at i. So add the value of each character to total. Then to select an answer, we're gonna take the total and we're gonna do modulus 20. So total after processing some large question is gonna be equal to some large integer. So maybe like 42,000 or something like that. When we do modulus 20, what that's gonna do 
is take that number and put it in the range of 0 to 19 because modulus returns the remainder of a division operator. And if you take some big integer and you do modulus 20, the remainder has to be between 0 and 19 because the remainder of anything divided by 20 is going to have to be between 0 and 19. So we're going to use this 0 to 19 value to select one of these 0 to 19 indexes in our answers array. So we'll use that to actually determine which answer to present back to the user. So here we'll say printf magic 8ball says, and we'll output the string, and we'll output answers at answer. So use this value from 0 to 19 to determine which answer to answer with from the answers array. So we'll save this here and we'll run it. And now I can put in a question. So I can say, is it raining? Is it going to rain tomorrow? And it says, Magic April says, better not tell you now. So that's one of those ambiguous maybe answers. But if I put in the same question, we'll get the same answer. So I'll say, is it going to rain tomorrow? And the Magic 8-Ball says, better not tell you now. So we're getting the same answer back for the same question. So the answer we get is actually dependent on the question, which is kind of cool. To me, that makes it more fun if the actual question plays a role in the answer that we're going to get. So we could say here, will the Yankees win tomorrow? Signs point to yes. If I put it in the same question, will the Yankees win tomorrow? Signs point to yes. We get the same answer back again. So to me, that makes it kind of fun that the question plays a role in the answer and that we're going to get the same answer for the same question. But I would like to be a little bit more random. I'd like it so that every time we run the program, the Magic 8-Ball could potentially have a different answer than it did when the program was run previously. So that way, if I run the program again tomorrow and I say, will the Yankees win tomorrow? I might get a different answer. So next we'll introduce some randomization to this Magic 8-Ball program as well. So I'll quit here. So we've quit. Let's introduce a little bit of randomization. What I'm gonna do is at the top here, I'm gonna seed the random number generator. So I'll say here, srand and then time null. srand seeds the random number generator such that we don't get the same random numbers every time we run a program. And you have to give it a different value every time we run a program in order to have that effect. In order to give it a different value every time we run a program, we're going to call time null because time with the argument of null is going to return the current time. And by definition, that's going to be different every time we run a program. So now that we've seeded the random number generator, I'm going to generate a random number that's going to make the results different, potentially, each time we run the program. So here I'll say int rotation is equal to rand modulus 20. So this is going to give me a random number between 0 and 19 because rand is going to return some integer value between 0 and some very, very large integer value. When I take that and do modulus 20, just like before, this is going to result in a number between 0 and 19. I'm going to use this number to skew the result that we get back normally with this process. So that way, every time we run the program, it'll give different answers potentially to the same question. Now, within one run of the program, it'll still give the same answer. So here I'll say total plus rotation modulus 20. So we're going to skew this total here by this rotation number to make it so that the results aren't exactly the same every single time we run the program. So we'll save this here. We'll run it. And let's try some other things here now. We'll say, is it going to rain tomorrow? And now it says, you may rely on it, which is different from last time. If I say quit, and I run the program again, I can say, is it going to rain tomorrow? And it says, yes, definitely. So it's still a yes answer, but it's a different 
response now. We're getting a different response. It'll still respond the same way though within one run of the program. So I can still ask here, is it going to rain tomorrow? And I'll still get yes, definitely back again. It's only when I quit the program and run it again, that's where we get back potentially different answers. So if I say, is it going to rain tomorrow? Now we get back, it is certain. And we've got a different response now. And to me, that makes it more fun. I like the idea that when you're playing with a Magic 8-Ball, it would give you back the same answer for one session with it. But then tomorrow when you use it, it might give you back different answers. So this is my interpretation of the Magic 8-Ball implementation in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.